Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to work on topic one, uh, some specific problems from past papers. So without further ado, let's jump straight to the paper and see the solution. So the first question says that two students, they do investigate the effect of color of heat, of heat absorption. They make gray paint by mixing black and white paint in different ratios. Five identical tin cans are painted in five different shades of gray. You can see here the percentage of the black paint. They put an equal amount of water at the same initial temperature into each can. They leave the cans under a heat lamp at equal distances from the lamp. They measure the temperature increase of the water in each can after one hour. Now Connie suggests that T is proportional to B, where B is the percentage of black in the paint. To test this hypothesis, she plots a graph T against B as shown on the axis below. The uncertainty in T is shown and the uncertainty in B is negligible. So here is the graph. Now state the value of the absolute uncertainty in T. Now in order to do that, we need to see here the uncertainty on the graph and you see this is the value and the uncertainty is one box. So how much is one box? You need to be careful here with your calculations. You see that the uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty in T is plus minus one degrees Celsius. Comment on the fractional uncertainty for the measurement of T for B equals 10 and the measurement of T for B equals nine. So what do we have to say here in number two? You see that the absolute uncertainties are the same. You can see them in the graph in each part. But so absolute uncertainty, let's write it down, is the same. But the temperature at B equals to 90 is actually higher than the temperature at B equals 10. So the fractional uncertainty, you know that is the absolute uncertainty over the value. So that means that the fractional uncertainty at 90, of course, is going to be smaller than the fractional uncertainty at 10 because you have bigger value at 90. Number three, on the graph opposite, draw a best fit line for the data. So what do we have to do here? We have to draw the line. And now we have to be careful. We need to pass through all the error bars. You don't have to pass through the points just through the error bars. And you need to draw a smooth line. In this case, you see that it's not a straight line. If you place your ruler right here, you are going to see that it's not a straight line, it's a curved line. So you need to draw a curved line passing through all the error bars. And number four, outline why the data do not support the hypothesis that T is proportional to B. Of course, in order to be proportional, you have to have a straight line and it passes through the origin. So here, the line is not straight and also it doesn't pass through the origin. 12b. Sophie suggests that the relationship between T and B is one that is of the form, as you can see here, where K and C are constants. The te to test whether or not the data support this relationship on graph of T against B to the power of 1 over 2 is plotted as shown below. The uncertainty in T is shown and the uncertainty in B to the power of 1 over 2 is negligible. Use the graph to determine the value of C with its uncertainty. Now, based on what you see here in this relationship, the C is going to be given from where the line intercepts the T. So as you can see here, the line intercepts at 4.7, more or less. OK, you can take it from 4.5 to 4.9. Every of those values is acceptable. and. In order to find the uncertainty on that, what you have to do, you have to use your ruler and draw the uncertainty lines on the graph. So what do you do? You go from here, the last value, you take the lower value of uncertainty and you're going to connect it with the higher value of uncertainty here. And you will do the same thing for the higher value of uncertainty at this point with the lower value of uncertainty at that point. Anyway, here you have to use the ruler in order to draw correct lines. I don't have a ruler, so I'm just going to do it by hand. So it's going to be something like so and something like so. 
So now these lines, they give you the uncertainty here. And you see that the uncertainty, it's more or less two boxes. So also, we need to round this C. So we're going to take the value of C to be equal with 5, not 4.7, plus minus 2 is the uncertainty, as you can see from the lines. So it's like two boxes, more or less. Number two, state the unit of K. Now, you see here the K, it is multiplying the B. B is a presentence, so it doesn't have any values. So the K and the C, of course, as well, they need to have the same unit as T. So units for K are Celsius. The next one, it says that a capacitor is a device that can be used to store electric charge. You that you study HL, you know what a capacitor is. Now, 18A, an experiment was undertaken to investigate one of the circuit properties of, of a capacitor. A capacitor C was connected via switch S to a resistance R and a voltmeter. The initial potential difference across C was 12 volts. The switch S was closed and the potential difference V across R measured at various time. The data collected along with error bars are shown plotted below. So here you can see the, the points in the graph. On the graph opposite, draw a best fit line for the data starting from T equal to zero. So again, here we have to use uh, our skills, our drawing skills. We need to pass through every point inside every error bar. Of course, here you can see it's not a straight line, so it needs to be a smooth curve that it passes through all the error bars. So at T0, you start from here and your graph should look like so. Okay, remember, we don't want to pass through every point, we want to pass through the error bars. Number two, it was hypothesized that the decay of the potential difference across the capacitor is exponential. Determine using the graph whether this hypothesis is true or not. So what do we see here at number two? We need actually to prove that the decay is exponential. So this will be given via use V for voltage by a formula in this form, minus K times T. Where, where, where K is a constant, V0 is the initial voltage of your graph. Now, what I need to do is to prove that this k is true, a constant, and also to prove that v0 is, of course, this value here. So, for I'm going to take different points in the graph in order to do that. So, the first point, I'm going to take it at t equals to 0. So, when I have t equals to 0, v is v0 times e to the power of 0 e to the power of 0, of course, it's 1. So v is equal to v0 and v is 12 volts. So, so far, so good. Now I'm going to take another point. Let's say a point here at 7.5 for the time. So I'm going to use this point. So second point, t is equal to 7.5 seconds. So what do I see here? I see my voltage is 5.5 more or less. It is equal with 12 times e to the power of negative k times 7.5 for time. So what I need to do here, I need to solve for k. So I'm going to take the, the physical logarithm in each side. So 5.5 is equal to ln of 12 e is the minus k times 7.5. Be careful here, don't go outside of the box. So what I will do here, I'm going to continue solving. This is very well determined how to do that. So you have minus 0.79 is equal to minus k times 7.5, if you do the calculations here correct. So you solve here for k and you have a value of 0.1. Now I need to take another point, a third point. Let's take the time at 23 seconds. So somewhere here, you go all the way to the left. So you need to do again the same thing and to prove that the k, it has the same value. So it's a constant. So it proves this form. So let's do that. What do you have here? You have uh, 1 for voltage is equal to 12 
e to the power of negative k times 23. So using again the same strategy, you take the ln in each side, 12e minus k times 23. So if you do your calculations correct here, you have minus 2.4 is equal to minus k times 23. So this will give you a value of 0 0.1. So you see that it proves this relationship, so indeed it is exponential. And also you can show here the relationship, so it is v is equal 12 times e to the power of negative 0 0.1 times time, and also you can include the uncertainty, 0 0.5. Of course, everything in volts. 18b, the time constant t of the circuit is defined as the time it will take for the capacitor to discharge where it to keep discharging at its initial rate. Use the graph in A to calculate initial rate of decay of potential difference. So here, in order to find the rate, actually we have to take the gradient in the graph. So we're going to use this graph in order to take the rate. Now, here in this graph, we talk about the initial rate. So that means that I have to work in the very first Parts. So from here, I need to find the gradient of the line at this initial part. So I'm going to draw here a tangent, let's say, something like so. Okay, and now from this graph, I need to take the gradient to see what we have. So I have two points. I have the point 1 here, that it's 12 and 0. And I have the other point here, that it's 9.5 and 0 as well. So, in order to find the gradient here, I, I have to take delta V over delta T. So, here it's 0 minus 12 over 9.5 minus 0. The final and the initial point. Of course, voltage over second. So, here you have a value of minus 1.3 voltage per second. And this is the initial rate of decay of potential difference V. And number two, the time constant T. Now, the time constant T, from the definition that you see here, that it says that T is the time to discharge at initial rate, so it's going to be the gradient from before intercepts, so that means for V to be 0, we're at time of 9.5 seconds. So, this time constant, it's 9.5 seconds. And 18C, the time constant T is equal to R times C, where R is the resistance and C is a property called capacitance. The effective resistance in the circuit is 10 mega ohms. Calculate the capacitance T. Of course, from here, you're just going to apply the formula. You're going to solve for C. So it's the time over the resistance. The time is 9.5 seconds. The resistance is 10 times 10 to the power of 6 ohms. So if you do the math here, you find a value of 0 0.95 times 10 to the power of negative 6 seconds over ohms. And now for you that you do SL, you know that these units are farads. But anyway, whatever you use here, it's fine. You don't have to worry about it. So that was all for today, guys. Study hard and good luck.